Okay, without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Heleni. Um, and during her session today, she's going to be covering experiences, concerns, and needs of the pregnant and postpartum women during the COVID-19 pandemic in Cyprus. This is a cross-sectional study. Um, I request that you give her all your time and attention. Please note, oh, we have someone from Istanbul, welcome. Um, now please note that you will can use the chat feature to ask your questions. Um, this is a public chat and I will read them out um, to Eleni as the session continues. You have the hand raise feature, please also make use of that. And without further ado, Eleni, take it away. Thank you. Thank you all for your presence. I would like to express my gratitude to scientific and organizing committee. And uh, my study is very interesting because we all know that COVID caused a lot of problem to the humanity. Eleni, you can take the presenter. Ah, that's why. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Uh huh. Can you make me because something is wrong? I cannot take it. That's okay. Um, Jane, uh, please assist making Elenia ah, presenter. Okay, I found it now. Fantastic. That's very good. Okay, go away. Oh. I think we can talk amongst ourselves for a minute, Frida. I think um, Eleni's sound has gone out. So, oh, uh, she's dropped off. Yeah, she'll be back. I think oh, <laughs> sometimes okay. she's in Crete. So, let's chat. Anyone want to, Frida? Do you want to tell us any specific things that happened to you in your country right. with the the COVID? Um, well, thing? well, right now, like I said, in our country, it is morning time. It is nine a.m. in the morning. Um, I can see a couple of people. I think I've seen two people who've joined us from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, Jane, what time is it where you are right now? I'm at uh, 7.12 a.m. and uh, okay, I'm currently in England. Uh, yeah, the COVID's uh, had a big impact in, in I'm at, I usually live in Florida, uh, mm -hmm. USA, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's had a huge impact. We lost, we lost quite a few moms and and uh, babies to uh, yeah. the pandemic it's very sad and friends so yeah it's been hard okay um nairobi was also really badly hit or i'd call it nairobi yeah. or kenya in general um eleni i see you back yes something happened with my internet sorry for that's that that's okay no 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 that's okay we totally understand okay now i must take okay, okay. thank you thank you yeah you're good thank now thank you and sorry for that Okay. Uh, this is an interesting study. It's about COVID-19 and uh, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated state imposed measures for the minimization of risk and management of those affected by the virus have resulted in unprecedented changes in our life and especially in mothers and pregnant women life. Pregnant and postpartum women are a less risk population and appear to be more vulnerable to pandemic-related stressors compared to the general population. <clears throat> Since the prenatal period is generally, as we know as midwives, is a time of high vulnerability to mental health problems. Studies today show an increase in the prevalence of depression and anxiety symptoms in perinatal women. The data for this uh, study comes from uh, an international study. The best of our knowledge, this is the first study that examines pregnant and postpartum women's experiences during COVID-19 in my country. 
aim was to examine the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated governmental imposed measures on the experiences, concerns and needs of pregnant and postpartum women in Cyprus. And you can see here the mother, how sad she is. The, the method was cross-sectional study and conducted in July 2020 and January 2021. Our sample consisted of 355 other pregnant women and 340 postpartum women with an infant up to six months. All of them was in Cyprus. The collection took place through phase Facebook, Instagram, and through local organizations and maternity units in both public and private sector, as well as through personal networks of colleagues and data collection implemented through Qualtrics. Now, about the results, the most important thing, as you can see here, the age of our participant was around 26 to 35. This is the normal age for women in Cyprus to be pregnant and be mothers. Uh, the country of origin, as you can see, most of them were from Cyprus and also for the mothers. About the education, uh, it's something that happened in my country. Most of the women get educated with a master's degree and PhD degree. And uh, let's see now what happened with the COVID-19 exposure. 1% of the women were diagnosed with COVID-19 infection. 7% reported having or had symptoms such as cough, fever, breathing difficulties, or other symptoms compatible with COVID-19. 4% of the participants had been in contact with someone who had been diagnosed. Almost 2% had someone close to them die. Can you imagine? The great majority of the participants, 81%, interpreted the impact of the pandemic on life as a negative. Somewhat negative was 32%, moderately negative 28%, extremely negative 22%, while 12% interpreted the impact of the pandemic as positive. Slightly positive 6.4%, moderate positive for 8% and extremely positive 0.9%. I am sure now that you, you wonder why this is happening. Because in my country, we have the custom when the women give birth, all relatives come to see them. And that most of the time create problem to women. That's why they said that now they have no visitors. Now, let's see what about the single critical source of stress related to the COVID-19 outbreak. Both for pregnant women and for postpartum women, the main problem was the impact on child. And we all know that when we become mothers, the first, our biggest worries are our children. 23% for pregnant women, 24% for postpartum women. About health concerns, we are all live that. 70.5% pregnant women, 22.9% for postpartum women. Financial concerns, 90%, 62.7% for mothers. Impact on family members and especially the elderly parents, and we all know that those are more vulnerable. 70% for pregnant women, 12% for postpartum women. General well-being due to social distancing and quarantine, 10% for pregnant women, 9.5% for postpartum women. Now, the overall levels of stress, as you can see here, was the same between pregnant women and postpartum women. For example, on COVID-19 related symptoms or potential illnesses was around four for both of them, both categories. COVID-19 related symptoms of potential illnesses in friends and family, 4.92 for 
pregnant women, 4.99 for postpartum women. Employment and financial impact, 5.5%, and for past women, 5.38%, almost the same. And disruption to social support, again, almost the same for around 4.24. Now, pregnant women's concerns, support, and involvement of family and friends was a big concern. Most of the women regarding changes in the support and involvement of family and friends was that they could not have their partner or a member of their family with them during labor and birth was a big problem. It is understandable and expected that visit will be limited. But at least I would like to ensure that my husband will be present and I don't even want to think about the possibility of giving birth entirely alone. And believe me, at the beginning of the pandemic, the women give birth alone. The concern or disappointment of women about the presence of our other family members or their children and parents during birth or immediately at the birth was also a major theme in the women's reporting. It is hard not to have the loved ones next to you, and especially my other children, to be able to visit us. Women's concerns about their child's health revolved mainly around the idea of infection of the fetus or the body either because of the mother a uh, baby because of the mother or others especially during the first days i will be very afraid to go out with the baby and i wouldn't i want friends and family members to kiss it many mothers were concerned about the overall quality of care that they would receive due to the novelty of virus if there is a complication due to covid that is new to the doctors and again is new and doctors don't know how to react. One woman were mainly concerned about the effects of government imposed measures on the psychosocial development of the baby, both in the short term and the long term. I am concerned about the limitation in socialization and development activities, stimulation from nature, playgrounds, and etc. 63% reported that their stress levels worsened as a result of the pandemic, worsened significantly around 14%, worsened moderately around 50%, while one third reported no change. Pregnant and postpartum women have particular concerns and, and needs as a result of current pandemic. And this is an important message for us. De to develop plans for the improvement of perinatal care during periods of crisis, as well as to inform policy making and future decisions on government imposed restrictions and measures for the management of public health threats. Community midwifery would be a vital source for the improvement of care offered to women and postpartum women, as well as as for the prevention of persistent stress-related issues and vulnerability during the challenging times of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you all for your presence. I have more to say if you wish. I am here for you. Thank you so much, Eleni, for that. Um, you, if you do have more to say, you actually do have another 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, you can share some more insights um, onto this topic. Please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, after that study, we did a qualitative study. Why? Because mm -hmm. we wish to see in depth what happened to the women. And mm -hmm. we found that the women, uh, they, they have a lot of stress because they worry about the long uh, consequences of the COVID-19 or the, on, our, on their child health, okay? okay. And believe me, um, they are right because we don't know what will happen after the COVID-19. 
And we already know that people that they survive from the COVID-19, they had some problems. For example, many they said that they have problem with memory, but we don't know what will happen with children. So this is new and we shall have new uh, research around this, uh, uh, the, uh, around the impact of the neonates. And not only that, the women, they uh, said to us that they found themselves to be more relaxed mm -hmm. during quarantine because they stay at home, they took care about their children, their mm -hmm. husband was next to them. So some of them, they said that uh, the relation between the family was become stronger. But unfortunately, we have the other thing that some women, they had problem uh, for, for violence. Some uh, husband become, uh, let's say, more aggressive because of the stress and things uh, around the, the financial problems. Yeah. Of course, they have no excuse for that. But um, yes, it is an interesting study to see, mm -hmm. and maybe in the future, I will present the qualitative results also. And we have uh, a, a question. It's a comment from Catherine, and she says, yeah. Eleni, you are right uh, to say at the start of your presentation was interesting. Indeed, it was very interesting and educative. Um, just an, another question or another comment from Caroline. It was a great presentation, such an eye opener. Um, Jen says that this was incredible, so much insight. Um, mine is more, mine is a question. Um, seeing that now we are approaching the post, um, the post end, um, quote unquote, of the COVID-19 pandemic, what are the key lessons learned and um, how, are the, how are those going to be implemented, especially um, Yes. in the midwifery going on forward how is that going to be done yes first of all we must have in mind that women in a period of crisis they need more support they need midwives to sit next to them to listen to them we all know how it's important is for the women during labor to have someone next to them to be there for them i mean not to discuss for example some women said that the women was there but they are discussing about the COVID. can you imagine to be in labor instead of have uh, the people around you yeah. to yeah. to give you calm mm and uh, explain to you what happened to yourself at that time to mm -hmm. talk about the COVID and to talk about the the things that doesn't uh, happen and to mm -hmm. say that the government can do more and not only that yeah. many women complain that they didn't um, support them to give birth naturally Oh, wow. okay. Most of the women give birth by cesarean section because mm. most of the obstetrician, they found it easier mm -hmm. for them. Why? Mm. Because, so, uh, and we must ask uh, obstetrician now, but the women said that, uh, obstetrician said, okay, instead of uh, having a woman to give birth for mm. 10 hours, I mm -hmm. can take the baby out in half an hour. Yeah. So the exposure of uh, health professionals, it will be less to the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you can see, and I'm glad that my students hear all that, mm -hmm. is that we must be very careful. And not mm -hmm. only that, about the protocols. In my country, we, we create protocols Mm -hmm. that uh, believe me for example to say that the the fathers cannot see the baby they mm -hmm. must stay outside outside of the hospital yeah. can you imagine but yeah. the fathers are fathers 
They, mm. they participate for this baby. They must mm. be with the baby. Mm. And uh, we must uh, always think the best and the worst for each occasion. Yeah. What was and the harm that you cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have many women that give birth by cesarean section. Yeah. That will cause a lot of problems to them mm. in the future. Mm. Family planning yes. and a lot of problems to the um, uh, financial par mm. problems. They may have more. The, the, we all know that the kids that that comes from elective cesarean. Mm -hmm. elective because most of them were elective yeah. they have more problems that, yeah. that from the babies that comes through uh, a cesarean and they have the ability they have mm. the opportunity to have some pressure on their chest mm -hmm. we all know that through elective cesarean the babies come out without preparation and that mm -hmm. creates problem to them mm. so we have a lot of a lot of to discuss a lot a lot to research and i'm glad that we have with us i'm sure uh, we already found that we have researchers yeah and uh, it will be nice to mm -hmm. see uh, globally mm -hmm. what can we do in the future Mm. pandemics not all right and um, i hope to stop pandemic no 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 no. it's uh mine is now um my last question as i can see the chat feature catherine is typing something on the chat feature as i wait for her um as she says what are the women's reactions to having a forced cesarean section hmm. It's something that I'm dealing in now. Uh, now we shall do a project about respectful maternity care. In okay. Cyprus, we have problem. We have, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know, but we are the first country in Europe mm -hmm. with rates of cesarean section. Yeah. And we must do something about that. We already did a campaign about cesarean section mm -hmm. we have a non-governmental organization in cyprus you can see you can find all this information that i told you yes uh, through internet now is birth forward mm. and uh, we work together mm -hmm. to do a, a project i hope to get funding because funding is very important yeah. and uh, we shall educate obstetricians and midwives not mm -hmm. to be uh, not to make so many interventions mm -hmm. because and to humanize childbirth mm -hmm. because if we uh, convince mm -hmm. the health professionals how important it is for the women to mm -hmm. have the proper support to mm -hmm. have the proper preparation mm -hmm. We can minimize the cesarea section. Okay, that's a fantastic answer. Thank you so much, Catherine, for that question. Um, I guess as we wrap up, my final question is um, looking at it from an educational and from a research um, perspective, what do you feel that is going to be implemented? Do you feel that we need to have more courses um, um, from a master standpoint, from a PhD standpoint? Do you feel like we need to now start honing um, more university courses when it comes to the specialization of postpartum in a pandemic? Mm -hmm. I said uh, we must do something now, first of all, to help women that they have post-traumatic stress syndrome from all this that happened to them. Yeah. So um, I try with a colleague of mine that is a perinatal psychiatrist mm -hmm. to, to create uh, some workshop to help women 
to talk mm -hmm. about their experience because we must have healthy mothers in order to have healthy uh, children. So now we must work. This is something that I plan to do for women in Cyprus to help them to, to survive, let's say, to, to lower their stress that because most of them, they go on under, under obstetric violence to have you and send to you, you have no choice, you have COVID, you must separate for your children, you must be in this room alone. Can you imagine? You cannot see anyone. You can communicate only through Viber. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So all of these, we must talk with the with the women, and we must help them to realize that uh, life is going on, and they must see what happened with the depression. We must see mm -hmm. how many women are depressed now because we are not only so strong to say, okay, and we don't yeah. know what happened in their houses. Okay, um, now we have one last question, the final question. As we close, this is from Catherine again, and she asks, what happens to the women who could not afford to have a cesarean section because of cost? <laughs> in Cyprus, we have um, a national health system. Okay. And uh, the, we, uh, the, uh, there is no cost. Mm. Oh, fantastic. And, and it's another problem. It's another problem because... Because yes, it the, is so readily available. Yes, yes, no problem. Do as you yeah. like. Yes, <laughs> no cost. And the women said, okay. And um, we all know that if a doctor said to a woman, uh, listen, it's better mm. if, we, if we go ahead with a caesarean section, for mm -hmm. you and for your baby is the best. All the women yeah. say, okay, okay, you know better than me. Yeah. Oh, well, um, <laughs> I think I'll give, there's a Caroline Marig, uh, Moringa is typing. Um, Caroline, I'm gonna give you um, about 20 seconds to wrap up so that um, if it's a question or comment, um, I can read it to Dr. Eleni and in the meantime, as we wait for Caroline's question, I really hope we hear more voices from other countries on the effect of COVID on women. Caroline, I do request yes. that you stay on the entire conference. It's a full day and we are covering various countries and the various effects on this um, session. Um, Dr. Eleni, thank you so, so much for your presentation. And um, now I will turn yes. off the record yes. element of the